Hi, this is Emilio from Digital Byte Computing and we're going to have a look at how to transfer data from an old Mac to a new Mac. So just got myself a brand new 27 inch iMac computer and then we've got my old 24 inch and we're going to look at how to transfer the data off this one onto this one. Alright, so the first thing you want to do is switch on your old computer and put it into what's called target mode. Okay, now the way that you do this is to turn on your computer and as soon as the computer turns on, on your keyboard you press the T key. Alright, so T for target. So let's just do that. And what this is going to let you do is this is going to put your computer uh, into target mode and it will show up on your new computer as a external hard drive essentially. And that is generally the quickest way to transfer data from your old Mac over to your new Mac. Okay? Alright. If you can see this, which I hope you can, that is target mode. So, the computer is now ready, it's set into target mode, and let's go on this new computer. So, target mode is generally the quickest way to transfer data between the two computers. There are other ways to do it, and that's via copying the data from your old computer to external hard drives, etc and then plug in those external hard drives onto the new computer and copying it back. Target mode lets you do it directly from one to another, so it's going to be considerably quicker. All right, you'll need to get yourself a cable that lets you plug in the two Macs to each other. So there's either a Thunderbolt cable or a mini DisplayPort cable. The cables themselves will look exactly the same, except for a small little icon. Don't worry about the process, it'll be pretty straightforward. An old Mac, if your old Mac doesn't have Thunderbolt, you're going to be using DisplayPort as the protocol, I guess. And you're not going to get as quick a speed as if you're plugging a newer Mac that has Thunderbolt to another newer Mac that has Thunderbolt. So ignore that. The cable that you want is just the standard cable that you can see here. You then want to plug it into the back of the Thunderbolt or the DisplayPort port on the back of each of the two Macs and then it will then show up on your new computer. So let's switch the new computer on. So there's a switch on the back. So it's going to do some initial steps first. Now what you want to do as well is on your mouse on the back of your mouse, you've got a little on switch, so you want to just flick that on, which I can't do right now. There we go. So that is now on, All right, and you'll see a little green light show up. On your keyboard, on the side of your keyboard, you've got a power button here. Okay? So you want to turn that on as well. And you'll see a green light show up on the front of your keyboard. Okay, so that Mac has now started up, and we're going to select the language, which I will select as English. Now the keyboard and mouse have automatically been detected. I didn't have to do anything to set these up. I just turned them on, ensured that the batteries were on, and it just found them automatically. You may need to do a little bit of configuring. It may need to ask you to detect them. Um, you may not, okay? Select your country. So I'm going to select Australia, which is where I am. A built -in screen reader. I'm going to talk to you as well. And let's say Australia as well. It's going to then look for a wireless network. Okay. If you have one, if you don't have one, you can continue. But let's just select uh, my wireless network, which is this one here. And put in my password. Continue. All right, so now on this point, uh, you have an option of what you want to do. If you have a Windows machine or an older Mac computer, you can select to transfer data from one to the other. Okay, if it's a Mac and your machine has been put into target mode, your old computer, 
then you can select this and you'll be able to transfer your data nice and easy. You can also do it from a Time Machine backup. So if you were running an old Mac computer and you had Time Machine configured on a hard drive, you can also select that option, plug in your Time Machine backup and you can restore it that way as well. Uh, if you have a Windows PC, if you are transferring from a Windows to a Mac, there's an option for you as well. Or don't transfer any information now. So we're going to select don't transfer any information now. Okay, then you sign in with your Apple ID. Okay, so let's just put that in. and click on continue or if you want you can create a brand new Apple ID if you don't originally have one alright so if you put in your credentials for your Apple ID it would have pulled up some information automatically your name uh, account name um, and then I've put in my password that I want to use you can put in a hint in here my password sounds like or whatever you want to put. I'm going to leave mine blank. Do you require a password to unlock the screen? Uh, so if it's in screensaver mode, do you need one to unlock it? I'm not going to do it, so I'm going to say no. Allow my Apple TV to reset this password. I'll leave that ticked. Set time zone, yes. And send diagnosis to Apple, sure. Do you want to register your Mac? Let's say we want to register it. So this is going to save your information of your Mac uh, on the Apple ID that you have so that it's easier to track when you have to go to the Apple store for any maintenance. Okay, and that is pretty much it. So that has installed uh, the basic configuration. All right, so my Mac has now been configured and you can see that local hard drive has shown up. So, I went into system preferences earlier and just configured things like, you know, the appearance, the highlight color, etc. Things like the desktop, background, screensaver, the dock, all those sort of things. So, what you'll see in here is that the local hard drive shows up inside the finder and you can actually uh, copy the data from your old computer over to this new computer here. So that is via target mode, like local hard drive has already shown up. This is the old computer and you'll see that there's users, applications, library and system. Inside the applications, uh, you'll see a list of all the applications that are, all, that are on my old Mac. Now if we have a look at my current Mac, so inside the applications inside my current Mac, You'll see that the list is uh, slightly smaller and it, that is because apps do not exist. Uh, you may also find that certain apps uh, won't play on a new computer. That is due to hardware that is different and you'll see it by a cross uh, and that is just an indication that, that it won't work on your new computer. I wouldn't recommend copying your applications from here. I'd say install them from scratch if you can to just ensure that, you, that your data is getting installed correctly. Because what can happen is the applications, um, let's say for example, uh, Google Chrome, for example, uh, could, install could, could install like files in other locations outside of applications. So if you just copy that icon over, uh, it may not work. So Dropbox would be another example where I would download the app and install it from scratch. Okay, so if we look inside users and inside my uh, drive here, so this is my username and you'll see listed in their applications, desktop, movies, music, pictures, etc. Uh, there's a list of uh, my iTunes library is listed in my old computer as you can see and we need to copy that into the iTunes library of the new computer. Now there's already an icon there that is just because I've already opened up iTunes, so it's already configured it for me. So we don't need that. Yours by default will be clear, will be empty. So let's just delete that iTunes folder and just move it to the trash. And there it goes. So then the next step from there would be to copy the contents of the old computer and move it into the new computer's music. 
Okay, so we just copy it and then we paste it inside the new music. So that's going to take a little bit of time to copy, but that process is now underway. Okay, so that's going to take some time to copy everything from your old music over to your new music. The pictures, let's do that as well. So we've got the iPhoto library and the iPhoto library, which was created automatically, which is a size of 7.4 megabytes. Uh, that's only there because I've opened it on this new computer as well. Yours may be empty, but if you have a look at my other library, it's 264 gig, which is considerably larger. So what we want to do is we want to copy that over as well. Okay, and that's essentially how you copy all your data. So if you found this information valuable and helpful to you, uh, it would be fantastic if you could give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.